Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kyle from the TF Review, and today we're going to be taking a look finally at Combiner Wars Devastator. We're going to be looking at the whole set in one video, so it's going to be a long one. So I hope you guys have, you know, a bagel or some cereal, maybe a soda, a pop or two, or, you know, something that you can munch on. And, I look, this actually makes it look like the box is really small, but the box is way down there. While I take you into the world of Combiner Wars, and we go face to face with Devastator. So, taking a quick look at the packaging, we can see on the front, it's got a beautiful, beautiful piece of artwork that features Devastator. Very kind of a retro 90s, you know, artwork style packaging that I really appreciate and I kind of miss. I wish more companies would do that. Uh, on the front, we can see them in their vehicle modes. Of course, the huge, gigantic, sexy Combiner Wars Devastator logo on the bottom left hand corner. On the top of the packaging, we can see each of the robots in their actual robot mode, and it gives you their names, Hook, Long Haul, Scavenger, Bone Crusher, Scrapter, and Mix Master. On the side of the packaging, we can see the huge, sexy Combiner Wars logo with, again, another piece of artwork of Devastator. And on the back of the packaging, we have an actual size image of Devastator, the toy, in his robot mode, and it gives a nice little bio and shows all of the Constructicons, again, kind of lining up the side. Once we've taken the figures out of the packaging, this is actually how they will come boxed. They come boxed in vehicle mode. Uh, some people would have rather have seen it come prepackaged in robot mode, but I personally think this is fine. Uh, it keeps them a little more safe. It's like shipping a bunch of bricks versus shipping one giant fragile combiner. Uh, so that I do appreciate, and you also get a little baggie full of all of the accessories. And of course he comes with a Devastator version of the signature Combiner Wars trading card. So taking a quick look at the accessories that come with Devastator, uh, for the American Standard Retail release, uh, you do get these two missile spam kind of missile launchers if you want. They do have 5mm pegs that just fold down. You can either put them in the back of a vehicle mode and have them dual wield as a weapon. You also do have two individual guns, and if you want you can actually peg these together for Devastator. And now, this is uh, his main blaster weapon, and it's, it's fairly sizable and fairly large. You also get these two wing pieces. If you don't know what these are, these are obviously the side pieces of Devastator's chest. They can be wielded as knives, almost, but it kind of looks a little bit silly because of how big they are. And lastly, you get this main chest piece, uh, and you can just go ahead and peg these in there for now. And it's got a real nice firm lock, so you don't have to worry about, you know, pieces falling off or anything. It's just, uh, you know, basically one solid piece now once you, once you clip them together. So now it is time to go over each individual uh, vehicle in robot mode. Now, it's worth saying that, yes, they are all a little bit lacking in terms of paint deco, and they are all basically upscaled Legends figures. I think it's worth noting that and getting that out of the way at the beginning of this video so I don't have to repeat myself six times over. So starting with Scrapper, he is one of the better figures in my opinion. He does have this really, really are nicely articulated scoop. If you wanted to, fold it back like that. And he rolls really well. He is primarily molded in a lime green plastic with black wheels and of course some purple highlights at the bottom for his robot mode. And transforming him is actually very easy. First thing we wanna do is we wanna take the scoop and lock it down in place like that. Then we can turn him over and unpeg his arms. And then from there we can now fold his legs down at the bottom. Fold these out at the back. And this is where things kind of get a little bit interesting. Then what we want to do is we want to take this feet and that just folds out like that. And this piece actually just clips in underneath like that. We do the same. Fold that out and then kind of tuck this piece underneath and that just clips into place and those are his legs it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it his arms are already practically done uh, all we need to do is hinge him back just a little bit and fold his hands out fold his hands out and lastly just want to lift his head up so here we have scrapper in his robot mode and I really 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 do dig his robot mode uh, he stands up really well. Uh, his chest is really nicely detailed. You have a nice Decepticon logo right in the center. Of course, red, blue, silver accents kind of 
scattered throughout as well as Silver Lakes, which is again, a real nice break from all of the lime green plastic that we've seen so far. And the wheels do a lot to sort of emphasize his legs and arms. And I kind of actually dig that. I really like the way it looks. It, it squares him up and it makes him look a little bit brawnier. For articulation, his head can move left and right, look up and down. He's got a very emotive looking head. His arms can move up and down, rotate 360 degrees. Uh, and they can move a little bit, they can hinge backwards and hinge forward a little bit if you, you really needed that. Uh, he does have a elbow swivel, I guess you can call it. Uh, and his hands do move in and out for the transformation. Uh, so not a lot of arm articulation. I do find that the arms are a little bit harder to pose. You kind of have to, you know, left, you have to pose them like a left shark. Uh, so that one arm is just sticking completely out and the other one is, you know, doing the opposite, I find, to look the best. So, uh, yeah, his arms are a little bit hard to pose. His legs are on a universal joint. They can move forward, back, bend at the knee, though the sculpt does break a lot right there. Uh, and he does have real nice ankle tilts. So, again, you can get some nice white poses. So the articulation, at least in the arms, is a bit lacking, uh, but the legs and the head are very emotive. The real nice paint deco, especially with the gold accents and the red, uh, it really saves this mode for me and makes him look real nice. But the arms are a bit of a bummer. Next up is Mixmaster, and this is the one that's caused all the controversy so far with the whole flipped over cement mixer. Uh, and that, honestly, in vehicle mode doesn't bother me too much. I think he's still a solid looking figure. Uh, the paint apps are real nice. He's got a nice silver deco uh, with the exhaust pipes in the pressure tank. Uh, as well as in the front, he's got the window and some more silver detail and a nice purple looking tank. Uh, again, he rolls real nice. He's got six wheels instead of four. On the bottom, we can clearly see the robot details, but in terms of an actual vehicle mode, I think I'm perfectly fine with him looking like this. It isn't until Devastator mode that you start to notice the real changes, but I think I'm perfectly okay with this uh, cement mixer mode. Now to transform him, uh, his transformation is also very easy. So the first thing we want to do is unpeg his arms. These you can just unpeg like that. And we do want to make sure to hinge them upwards. Like that. Like that. And then we can rotate his head. And now we can see that mean looking sculpt. Now what we want to do is take the front and that just folds out. And literally you just split his legs and then you've got him, you're done. And there we have Mixmaster in his robot mode. Uh, and again, I think it's a very solid robot mode. The main issue is the whole cement mixture tank. The fact that it is so big and it often does, not all the time, but it can make him back heavy to a point where he's going to want to lean back. Uh, but if you can find a way to justify it and to get him some nice poses, uh, that's usually generally pretty easy to, to look past. On his chest, again, we can see he's got a real nice Decepticon logo. Some more gold and silver accents. And all in all, he's not a bad looking robot figure. Uh, for articulation, his head can move left and right. Let's see if you can see that left and right. Uh, his arms can move in and out, rotate 360 degrees. They're a little bit hindered by this whole back piece. Uh, they can bend at the elbow, which is nice, and he doesn't have any uh, hand articulation. It's just molded one piece. Uh, his legs also on a universal joint, move forward, back, bend at the knee. He's got some nice uh, 45 degree range of motion. And once again, he's got a real, real good ankle tilt. So you can get, again, nice, wide, stable stances. Especially if you use his uh, cement mixer as a tripod, an additional tripod, and it gives him uh, some real, real cool looking possibilities for poses. So this all in all is one of the better posable ones, I would say. He can really do some cool stuff. Next up is Long Haul. And I think Long Haul uh, is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, uh, in vehicle mode. Because I just think he has overall the most personality of all of the of all the Constructicons, uh, because he just looks pretty pretty menacing, i got to be honest with you. Uh, he rolls, well, kind of well. I thought he rolled well. Well, he's supposed to roll well. I guess for some reason I'm not doing it right, but whatever. Uh, his front, the front of him is really nicely detailed. You can see he's also got the cab detail. 
lots of silver and a lot of paint apps down there at the bottom. To transform him, uh, all we need to do is unpeg, kind of push these out, and then unpeg his arms. And do the same on this side, just make sure his arms are nice and unpegged. We can also go ahead and uh, lock his arms in an upright position. And then we can take his front piece, and this just lifts up. And while that's out of the way, we can rotate his legs around. Flip his head up. And his head is a little bit tough to work with. Take this chest piece, fold it down, and then this just kind of folds over like a cape. And then we want to open his legs up. Fold these pieces out. Uh, they're a little bit hard. Fold that piece out. There we go. And then now we can fold his legs up. And there we go. And his robot mode, just like his vehicle mode, is of course the most chunkiest, but also the most barbaric in a way, uh, with this head sculpt that looks almost like a knight's helmet. Uh, very menacing, very mean, he's a nice little chubber. Uh, and he's really, really very nicely detailed with the whole chest being painted black. It breaks up the sculpt really well. I wish his legs just had a little more. They are a little bit on the lime green side, especially these front panels right there. For articulation, his arms can kind of move out, not really all that much, and then they can rotate 360 degrees, and his hands can move in just like that, and that's basically it. Uh, he does have a waist swivel for the transformation, which is real nice, very ratchety. Uh, his legs are ratcheted, uh, but they're very strong, uh, mainly because they're for the, uh, the big combined mode. does have a bit of a knee joint, it's ratcheted, it's not too tight, uh, and he does have ankle tilts which again is very nice uh, and that basically does it for this figure he's, he's pretty cool uh, he's probably one of my favorites of the bunch in my top two I would say next up is Rampage who's kind of just a big giant green earth mover with the Decepticon logo in the front basically with this figure it's kind of a what you see is what you get and I sadly hate to say that this is my least favorite figure in the entire set and I'll tell you why a little bit more when I get to the transformation. Um, you can see he's big and green. He does have some silver accents on the side. Again, the big Decepticon logo and some silver accents in the front. Uh, on the bottom, just black. Very simple. He does have wheels, so he can roll just a little bit. And the scoop in front is articulated. I am not a fan at all of the uh, green treads. I think that looks horrible. So eventually I would like to paint these treads black just to break up all the green because this is kind of a green overload, unfortunately. Now to transform him, I think he does have one of the most finickiest transformations of the bunch. And I'll show you why. Uh, first thing you want to do is unpeg his legs. We can get this scoop out of the way. Now his legs are on these joints and they pivot around and they're supposed to connect like that. Uh, let's see. And they're supposed to connect, but they it's a really bad connection, so nine times out of ten it's coming loose and the figure is plopping down. Occasionally and sometimes you can get it to where you can get it and it's you know really in there, uh, but most of the time you're never gonna get a firm connection and it's just gonna cause more problems than it's worth. Uh, but to continue his transformation, let's see if I can just get this in here. Uh, we just want to make sure his legs are at either side. Uh, we can pull his leg out like that, make sure it clicks. And then we can split the front of his feet and make sure they click. Do the same. And split the front of the feet. And that's basically it for the legs. Again, we're still I'm still having the issue with this joint not wanting to click together. Uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll revisit that when I'm done with his upper body. So we can see we've got the rest of the earth mover to do. So first thing we want to do, just unpeg this back piece. And this is all just on one main big hinge. And then we can actually unpeg it and fold it out like that. Then we can take his arms, and they're just on ball joints, spin it around, and turn it. And there you go. On this side, Fold it around, spin it, and then you're done. Then we can take a shovel, and the shovel just flips up like that. 
And there is his chest piece. Uh, lastly, we just want to take his head. We want to take this piece, fold that back, and then we can take his head, flip that up, and then peg back into the main body. And then now we have to work around his feet. And there we go, I think I got a solid connection, and there is Rampage in his robot mode. Uh, and his robot mode, again, just like the vehicle mode, is the weakest of the bunch. Though, I will give him some major credit. He does have the best arms in the bunch. Uh, the best proportioned arms, the best articulated arms. Uh, so I really do like his arms. They're very kind of legendy arms. But I'm fine with that, and I would have been happy if they all had this arm. On the back, we're just kind of stuck with this big black piece. We can kind of orient that however we want. And make sure this stays locked together. Uh, for articulation, his arms can move in and out. They're on a ball joint. Can rotate 360 degrees. Uh, his elbows are on a ball joint, so again, you can get really perfect 180 degrees of articulation and rotate at the elbow, which is real nice. Uh, when these legs decide they want to work, uh, they can move up and down. They are on ball joints, so they can rotate 360 degrees. He does have an upper thigh swivel, and he can bend at the knee, and he does have some nice ankle tilts, much like the rest of them. Uh, but again, good luck trying to pose him when you're not fighting this joint and this connection, because it's just so bad. Uh, and I don't know what they were thinking when they thought this was going to work, because it's not working at all. Very similar to Rampage, but better in almost every single way, is Scavenger. And Scavenger is a lot of fun. Uh, he can roll really well. He's got, he's got just enough paint taps. His treads are not lime green. They're actually done in purple, which is still true to Devastator. And it breaks up the sculpt of the figure, and he doesn't look like a giant green blob of plastic. And I think he looks really well. And I would have been perfectly fine if Rampage had purple treads, to be completely honest. Uh, you'll notice me fiddling with the shovel a lot, and that is because it is articulated, but only to an extent. Um, the only way to get actual natural movement is to have it up like this, so it can rotate and be kind of flat. Anything else, the rotation is going to be off, and it's just not going to be realistic. Like, when have you ever seen him shovel like that? But again, he's got, you know, it's articulated, which is nice and a lot of fun for earth moving. And it can kind of close up like that. On the bottom, again, not a lot of robot, robot details. He's got this nice gold plate. He's got a wheel back here and two wheels right there. And it completely removes the bad taste in my mouth left by Rampage. Now to transform Scavenger, he's again a little bit similar to Rampage, but again a little bit different and a little bit different of a flavor. First thing we want to do is we can we can put the shovel uh, down for just a bit, uh, and then what we want to do is unpeg the treads. Unpeg these treads, and you'll notice this whole piece is going to want to fold out, and that's fine. We can just leave it out for now. Next thing we want to do is we want to take is this whole top piece right here. We'll split into two. Just like that. And now, we can lift this, these pieces up. We also want to fold uh, the cockpit back. And then pull the arm up in the place. And then now we can fold his hands out. Now for his legs, we just want to lift this piece up. And this piece will fold all the way back. Make sure the legs aren't going to hit anything. And then now we can just clip it in like that. Now for his head, we just want to flip the chest out. Lift the head up. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. And then his legs are identical to Rampages where you just pull them out. Wait for the click. Split the feet. Again, wait for the click on both sides. Wait for the click. Click. And click. And there you go. And this figure is actually really, really nice. I wish Rampage was a lot more like him. I'm perfectly fine with the purple legs. I think they look great in terms of breaking up the whole figure as a whole. It doesn't just look like a wash of green. 
Uh, it actually has color and a little bit of character to him, unlike Rampage, which looks just like a big piece of poop. With the shovel, we actually can uh, do a lot with it. We can rotate it, fold it down like that, or have it kind of sneak under him and be like a poop catcher. Uh, if we want, we can fold it up and around, and it can be like a visor or make him look a little more in intimidating. This looks like something out of uh, the Bay movies. Uh, or if we want, we can just condense it and make it as small as possible so that it's out of the way. Again, a real nice feature for Scavenger and another reason to really like this figure. Uh, for his chest, it's covered in silver paint, which looks great. Uh, and you do have the signature red and black details kind of scattered throughout. Uh, for articulation, his head can move left and right and kind of down, but not really up. Uh, his arms are on ball joints. Uh, I think this is the only figure in the lot that has... Uh, shoulder ball joints um, but they move in and out uh, and his elbows are also on a ball joint so they also have a real nice range of motion uh, no nothing for the waist his legs are also on ball joints again nice range of motion but be careful because it does feel like these ones would kind of get looser over time if you do try and pose it too much uh, and you'll notice there is a bit of wear already on them uh, so that means plastic is already flaking so be careful when you're posing it uh, and his legs do have nice ankle tilts again, just like the rest of the figures. Uh, and this one, I think, is probably the most fun to pose. Uh, just because he, he's goofy, but very, very, like, menacing in a creepy 80s robot way. With his big, blocky, square head sculpt and his kind of lanky, bright, purple legs. Uh, I'm going to say this is one of my favorite figures. Again, top three, I would say. Uh, and again, a lot of fun. Last but certainly not least is Hook. And, uh, yeah, he looks like crap from this angle, but from this angle, he actually looks pretty good and pretty solid. Uh, in terms of a vehicle mode, it's very, very bizarre and very, very one-sided, if you couldn't already tell. Uh, he does roll really nice, probably the best out of all of them. And he's got six wheels on the bottom. We can see, again, robot details, no surprise there. I do wish the retractor arm actually retracted. Uh, it just moves up and down. It doesn't rotate left and right. It doesn't do anything. It literally just moves up and down. That's it. There's nothing else you're going to get out of it, which is a bit unfortunate. So you're really mostly stuck posing it like this because I would say this is the most accurate to G1. I mean, if you wanted to do it like that and make it a little more interesting, a little more dynamic, you're more than welcome to. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but, you know, whatever. I'm <laughs> continuing. Uh, that basically does it for the vehicle mode. Again, it's just a little, little hook arm. Now on the back, you know, just black and, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a very basic, basic mode. Now to transform hook, uh, what we want to do is unpeg these arms and then scoot them down like that. And we can also take this whole back piece and fold it down and that kind of creates kind of shoulder armor a little bit uh, then we can take his hands fold those out and take his hands and fold those out and we can also rotate his head around and look there he is hi mr hook how you doing and then make sure this is all kind of evened up make sure none of it's you know weird or anything uh, and that moves us to the legs and the legs i think are the most interesting transformation wise in the uh, set Fold them down, we can unpeg them. Uh, and you'll notice it's kind of a cluster right now. So to remove this cluster, all we need to do is just fold them back. Make sure this pin back here pegs into place. Fold the feet down. Uh, and then there's a peg right here. We need to make sure this peg right here gets into a hole that's right there. It's pretty difficult to see. Uh, but you'll know it when you finally do see it. And like that. And after you do peg it in, it all just kind of sits perfectly and then do the same from this side just make sure the peg fold the feet out and make sure this peg pegs in uh, like so and there we go and there we have hook not captain hook but hook hook the decepticon hook uh, and we can see He's got a pretty, actually, very bulky looking robot mode, and I dig it. Uh, I think his chest looks wonderful. 
again, very, very 80s looking retro, kind of like cassette player-ish, which I dig and I really, really like. The whole aesthetic that they're going for with the 80s, very blocky, very uh, Walkman-ish look is just one of my favorite things that Hasbro has done in a long time. And I dig it. I dig it a lot. All right, you'll notice he does have a big hook at the end. Again, that can be used as a tripod, much like Mix Master's mixing tank. Uh, and you're really kind of stuck with it unless, you know, you want to put it out and if you don't want to rely on it, but you're stuck with it down like that. Kind of like Hotspot, too. Uh, for articulation, his head, very, very emotive. I love the shades in his face. He looks like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen Spaceballs, uh, but not Pizza the Hut, but his robot friend. That's who this guy looks like. That's who Hook looks like. I'm not sure, but he's, he, he does like the weird, like, head jolt. He's like, whoo, and he looks to the side. Uh, that's who this looks like. I don't know why, but it just reminds me of that. Um, for articulation, his arms can move in and out, but they are hindered by this piece right there. They can rotate 360 degrees. And, you know, you don't want that to happen. Uh, they do have a swivel right here, and you can bend it 180 degrees. But again, this is kind of garbage in terms of like acceptable articulation, and it just looks like crap. Uh, and he does have an elbow swivel, which is kind of interesting. Uh, his legs are on a universal joint. Move forward, move back, move in and out, and they can bend less than 95 degrees, and he does have a nice ankle twill uh, that just fell off. So all in all, I would say this is a solid figure. Again, top four, I would say. I, I mean, I can only go up to top six, so I'm not sure how many tops I can really have. Uh, but again, a really nice, uh, very solid figure with the exception of this bizarre elbow joint and the non-retractableness of the retracting arm. If it just retracted just a little bit, I would have been happy. I know the third party ones do, so I might just get one of those replacements and just pull this off and pop one of those on because it would add a lot of playability and a lot of fun to it, uh, in my opinion. And that's why we buy these toys for fun, guys. Well, we've made it this far, guys. And if you're not a fan of the actual Devastator mode, uh, I would say this set is worth picking it up for the robot modes since they are quite literally upscaled G1 figures both in terms of their aesthetic and as well as their posability, which is also kind of sad. But very, very, very neat and something I don't think we'll be getting probably ever again. So it's really, really worth at least checking out for the robot modes. With that aside, all that's left to take a look at is Devastator. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these back in their vehicle modes, and we are going to take a look at the Mamma Jamma himself, Mr. Devastator. So now it is finally time to take a look at Devastator in his huge combined mode. And we're going to start this combined mode uh, working from the bottom all the way up. So, here is Scrapper who forms the left leg. To transform him into Devastator mode, first thing we want to do, we just want to make sure this is all locked up. We can get that out of the way. Uh, then what we can do is unpeg these wheels. And then we want to flip the arms down like that. And then we can peg them back into place like so. Uh, and we also want to turn. And you'll notice there's a, little, there's a little pin right there. When you turn it, there's a groove that it fits right into and it'll keep those uh, nice and in place. Then what we can do is take the shovel and then at first it's going to feel like it doesn't want to click but you just got to keep pushing and eventually it'll click in. Uh, then what we can do is turn them around, lift these leg panels up and also flip the feet forward like that. Lastly what we need to do is take his cab, twist it around and it'll sort of act as a lock for this whole section right here, uh, which is really nice. And that's his leg. So we can go ahead and we can put this to the side for now and take a look at Mixmaster. Now to transform Mixmaster, we just want to take him. Uh, first thing we need to do is unpeg his arms and this will sort of unlock this front section, which just tabs out. Then we need to open this up, flip the ankles around, which are the ankles in his robot mode, uh, and pull these connection pins out. It's a little bit harder on this side. All right, and then we can go ahead and put the whole front end back together. Then what we can do is turn them around. We can take this end. This will become the front of him. 
and we can also fold out uh, which will be his heel like that. Uh, it also asks you to bend his arms back. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that for now. And that is basically the leg transformation for Mixmaster. Next up is Long Haul. And to transform Long Haul, all we want to do is take his arms, fold them up, unpeg these arms as well. And we can just leave them loose for now. Then we need to unpeg this whole back piece as well as the front piece. And this all kind of unpegs as one piece like that. And then fold it up and over like so. And we can take his backpack piece and this will just lock into place, tab into place, whatever. Uh, and then we can go ahead, fold that down. And then there's a little hinge that folds out like that. Fold this down and this will become his main legs and then fold that out like so. Uh, and then we can go ahead and orient these arms kind of however we want, make sure they just, they're not in the way or we can put them like that. We can do kind of whatever we want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And there is uh, Long Haul in his soon to be Devastator mode. Next up is Rampage. And Rampage is pretty easy. We just want to unpeg his arms, fold this piece back and then and then after we folded this giant black piece out, we can go ahead and rotate it. Uh, actually, I think it's going to rotate this way. And then we can orient the scoop like that, like that. We can put it back like that if you want it out of the way. Again, we can do whatever we want. And these, his treads, they will kind of uh, just flail. They don't really have anywhere to lock into place. So uh, be mindful of that. But in um, when we do get Devastator all together, yeah, that won't be an issue anymore, really. Uh, because the chest piece will lock everything into place. And then same over here. It's very, very similar. We just want to do this. Unpeg this piece out, turn it. And then peg the treads back in. And that's basically it. And the treads will be kind of pegged back into place when we do get uh, the main chest piece in place. And we can go ahead and put that right there. Last but not least, we have Hook. And then with Hook, we're basically just splitting them in half. So first thing you want to do is kind of unpeg this arm and then take this piece, fold it down and around, and it's starting to want to come apart. Then what we need to do is unpeg all these pieces and then make sure he tabs into place or slides into place, actually. There we go. Uh, and that's basically it. Now there's also a connection right here which we'll use a little bit later. I think we can fold that out right now. And then there's another one over here. We can fold that out as well. Uh, and this will form Devastator's head pretty soon. So there we have all of the transformation bits. Uh, all that's left to do really is to put Devastator together. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna start with Scrapper. And we're gonna notice there's a pin right here, actually right here, that will peg into place right there if you can see that so let's go ahead and do exactly that all right now you do really really need to be mindful when you're when you're doing this because there's a lot of different connections that need to go in and all at the same time so it can be a little bit tedious and a little bit frustrating all right now I've got that pegged into place we also want to make sure that this mushroom peg also pegs into this little slot right here like that and then we can go ahead and fold this peg as well and make sure that all pegs into place and uh, you should have a sturdy fit and we do and it's literally it's on there it's not going anywhere so now we can go ahead and start on mix master mix master again it's, it's a little bit tedious uh, you do need to watch what you're doing just slide that in make sure everything locks into place and there we go much easier uh, and as you can see he's already ridiculously tall so next thing we need to do is we need to take hook and get him ready to be transformed and added to the top of devastator and by doing that we just need to lift his head and his head will pin into place like that And it's a nice snug fit. He can look around. He's pretty beastly looking. Uh, and on the bottom, we do need to turn him over 
and pull out this peg right there because that will come in handy pretty soon. Uh, we also need to take this peg right here and fold it so now it's facing downward and this peg will go into this hole right there. So now is the moment of truth. It's an odd, odd fit. You just need to make sure everything goes right into place. And there we go. He's in there nice and snug. Lastly, we just have the arms. Uh, and the arms just easily peg into these holes right there. There. Uh, you just take it. Bada boom, there's one. And then we peg this arm right here into that hole. Bada boom, there's two. And we're basically done with Devastator. Of course, we just have one final touch, which is this. And this piece is a bit finicky. Um, and I'll tell you why, because you need to peg it. There's like five or six different pins. You'll notice a bunch of different uh, pegs and little pins right here and right there. But you do need to make sure you align them. And these will also lock the treads into place. So they are pretty important. So, let's see if I can get this right. All right, and that's that tread. And it is a little bit loose, so if we want to fix the tread issue, we can go ahead and just peg both of them in like that. So after we've pegged each side of the treads in, uh, you'll notice they're actually, you know, stable, but the back sides are also, they're still kind of loose. So you do have that issue. Um, and after you do peg each side in, you can just kind of press the chest and uh, he will be, it'll be fine and it'll keep everything together real nice and pretty. Lastly, we have his hands. And to do his hands, I just want to take these pieces right here and they will fold out. And of course, be weary of where the thumb is and that'll tell you which hand it goes on. And we just go ahead and peg it in with just a single peg. And there's that one. And then we take this one. It just folds out. Look for the hole. And we just peg it in like so. Here we have Devastator in his robot mode. And for starters, yes, he is absolutely ginormous. He's probably the biggest combiner um, in terms of Hasbro and third party releases that we've ever gotten so far. But that's not without his issues. I believe that one of the biggest issues is that they swapped out uh, various things such as parts count, uh, pain apps, engineering for just sheer size. And I'm not 100% sure that was the way to go. Um, just for quick size comparison to get this out of the way, here he is next to Combiner Wars Defensor, who is maybe a little over half the size of him. Uh, now you can take the weapons, the two weapons that we saw earlier, uh, that unpegged and pegged together, and these do fit right in his hands. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Just peg it in like that, and now he's got a gun. Again, you can see where a lot of the issues lie. Uh, it's very, very hard to actually play with because of the sheer size and the plastic tolerances and the quality overall. And I do think that is a bit of a disappointment because they obviously aim this towards collectors, releasing this as a six part set. And that's not to say that this is not a fantastic uh, display piece because I mean, just look at it. If you like it, then obviously you're gonna get it. If you don't like it, then chances are you've either A, already gotten one of the third party ones or B, you just don't wanna get it because it's too expensive. This toy does retail for $150. So it is a bit on the pricier side. Uh, taking a look at his articulation, he does have some, surprisingly. Uh, his arms, let's see, you can't really articulate him without, you know, him falling apart. Let that be known. Uh, yeah, let me get that out of the way. His arms do move in out move in and out and can rotate 360 degrees uh, they can bend at the elbows they do have an elbow swivel uh, and the actual hands themselves don't really have any articulation but you kind of don't need them for a toy this big uh, he does have a waist swivel his head can turn 
to left and right, which is nice. Uh, his legs can move forward and back, bend at the knee, hips ratchet in and out. Uh, uh, and he does have ankle tilts, surprisingly, which is really nice. Again, good luck posing him without him falling apart. It's one of those, you know, gigantic combiner issues uh, that you get with every single combiner, whether it be third party or Hasbro release. They're going to fall apart. They're going to want to fall apart and you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> with that being said, this toy is a lot of fun and it's insanely unique. And I will give Hasbro credit for that. I don't think we're going to get a G1 inspired Devastator again for a very very long time from Hasbro and you know there are people who prefer to collect just Hasbro so you might want to jump on that if that's the case if you are hopefully waiting for the the ultimate all-time best devastator and this one just doesn't doing it for you you might want to look at the third party uh, because those ones of course obviously are much more intricate much more detailed maybe a little smaller than this one uh, but of course, you do have the price difference. You're paying, you're paying close to five, six hundred dollars for a third party, which is this one is just one hundred and fifty. Maybe you can get it a little lower if you're, you know, Toys R Us rewards membership or whatnot. Uh, but again, the price difference does lean heavily towards this one. If you want to save some money, this would be the way to go. Now that basically does it for this look at Devastator. I would recommend picking him up if you are a fan of G1 Devastator because again I don't think we're going to get an official G1 release of Devastator ever again if not for a very long time. Not to mention it's Titan class so it's huge which makes it even more unique and overall just for the uniqueness I would say this is worth picking up especially if you're a diehard Transformer collector. Anyway that does it for this review guys thank you so much for sticking with me I, this has been my longest review ever and it is worth it in the end. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video!